Okay, folks, this is Bill from Iona Homestead, sometimes known as Little White Dory. And I am taking a look at my 15 by 6.5 by 6.5 Kingbird Amazon bought greenhouse thing. So it has roll up doors like this on both ends where you can roll up the outer plastic and leave a screen, which is good because it still gives you some structural integrity, but it allows you to keep the critters out, meaning just moths, um, the, the flies or whatever to get in there for, you don't want in there, you don't want anything in there. So it's good to have the screen. One of the modifications I made, and I'll show it from the inside is this crossbar here. And I'll show you how much of a difference it makes from the other side. From here, if I just put my hand here and try to rock it, it's really, I'll see if I can get it out this way. It's kind of solid, okay? Now, as I come along here, I'll just point out that there are some roll-up windows here. Um, I would imagine it would add to ventilation, but I, I don't think I have much in the way of issues with the ventilation because I'm keeping it, for the most part, wide open. But those would open and add quite a bit more. So now here from the front and the facing this is like facing southeast, I guess. Um, you can see the same effect here, right? That screen, you can actually even see the tension. It, it pulls it together and holds it. It wraps it like an envelope. But if you look at this side, you'll see a lot more give. So that one brace in the back made a really substantial difference. And you can't put one here because then you can't get in. But by putting that there, it did you know, really stiffen it up. Additionally, I mounted the piece of wood here using some clips I can see I think I can show that from the inside then I pulled the bottom skirt of the greenhouse out and used two um, I guess it's one by two uh, furring strippy kind of things to clamp it in so that it doesn't really move maybe put two screws or three screws in it that really just holds the skin on really tight from this side you can see it I'll move in here all right, so you can see the plastic wrap pulled down and then that thin strip runs all along here. So that secured it to the piece of five quarter decking, a 16 foot piece, you can see right here. So that's 16 foot and, the, and this tent is uh, four, uh, 15 feet. So you can get the, the math there, worked out well. Now let me just open this up. It's a zipper system that, you know, it's, it's gonna have a life that um, it's not gonna be forever. I'm kind of puzzled as to what we'll give first, whether the zippers will go crappy or what happens is the plastic between the reinforcement here gives out and you wind up with a nice mesh instead of a plastic cover. So let's take a look inside. Yeah, it's comfortable in here. Um, I have a Inkbird controller, which, yeah, it does have power. And it's saying it's, I think, 85 degrees, 83 degrees. And the setting here was, I think, for 66. So if it's above 66, it's going to put the fan on. If it's below 66 by a degree, a few degrees, it would put a heater on that was sitting there. But we don't need the heater anymore. So we've got a couple of plants in here that we haven't done transplanting yet. These are getting kind of big, so they'll only go into my big flower pots. Here's some Jubilee orange or whatever. This curling of the leaf is telling me that they're getting too much water and not enough nutrients and they're trying to cut back on the flow of water by closing up and not evaporating as much water. You can see there's some blossoms here. Um, these conditions are pretty good for a plant to live in, but you know, eventually they gotta get transplanted. If I zoom in down here, you'll see that the bottoms are starting to get kind of funky and it gets trickier and trickier to transplant. Along the bottom, the section section here, we have things that we're just starting to germinate now. In fact, I think, Yep, I have a germinating right there. So these are cut and come again zinnias. This is the first for me. I'm doing this as a tray instead of selling units. People wanted to buy a whole tray. Let me see. Nothing. Oh, yeah, there's some back there. So I have to watch this maybe by the end of the day. And, yep, there's some more over here starting to sprout. I uh, see some sprouts. So I'll have to tend to this today. Get some moisture in there. The temperature in here is just perfect. I keep some of the transplants down here for a while just to give them a chance to become happy. They like the environment in here. Alrighty, folks, we're gonna go back up. And let's see, heading out this way. 
what I was saying is I'm using these, um, what do you call it, the metal, I can't think, it's EMT uh, conduit brackets, and I'm clamping the frame of the greenhouse to that 16 foot long board. That gives me both weight and stability. It makes everything, oops, let me back out again. It makes everything less likely to rack. They give you one vertical or diagonal here. They don't give you one for both sides. It's a sort of a flimsy setup in the end of the box, but it's easily reinforced. Um, I wrapped all the joints at the ends with some tape just to eliminate, you know, sharp edges. Um, and then the one thing I'll point out that I, I like about this particular model is I'm going to step back so you can see it. <clears throat> a lot of them only have this single post going from front to back. This one had this rail and this rail as additional rails. Now, granted, they're not heavy duty, you know, but if I want to do, try, if I do want to try to grow a tomato in here, I can hang a string from that and it'll support a plant. I wouldn't do a whole wall of plants on that, but certainly can handle more than one. Um, it does hold the rain out. There's no seam along the top. I see here, you know, you can see the tops of this. I should have probably put a little piece of tape, but that's fairly smooth. The strings come here from around here that hold it in place and put a little tension. Yeah, there's a few places I could probably add a little bit of more tape to cover things, although that's still pretty smooth. Um, and you can see I have wires hanging on here. It's not exactly an OSHA or, you know, code, but plugged in to an EF, uh, electric, yeah, GFI outlet. And I've got three sets of shelves going this way. I could come up another one higher. I probably will next year. And then I could probably fill across the back there this is a good idea, bad idea. Good idea because it gives me more, more space. It's not on the floor, but it made it trickier to roll things in and out. So over the winter, next winter, I'll probably lay some plywood or something under here to give me a better rolling surface. All right, let's head back out. It's not cold in there. <laughs> it's supposed to be about 75 degrees here in New York today. And uh, I don't know. I expect that this will be okay with just the screen ends open and the fan on. It, it, the, the plants themselves can handle the heat uh, at 85, probably up to 90 is absolutely no problem. When you go over that, make sure they have water. It's the key thing. Alrighty, folks, that's the, uh, the 411 on the Kingbird greenhouse. I think I paid, when I bought the first one, $209. Um, when I got it, unfortunately, it was my mistake. I thought it was missing one of the poles for the top. And... I thought, geez, by the time it gets them to give me a new one, maybe I should just get another one because I thought it looked like it was going to be good. So I actually bought a second one. And now that means I have spare parts, but I think I'm also just going to use another one of these in this area over here that I can access around that way. Um, we'll reposition this thing sometime after the season's over. Alrighty, folks, that's it. You all grow that. Bye-bye.